Happy Easter, Metter United Methodist Church, and those of you who are joining us from all over. Uh, we uh, welcome you to this Easter worship service um, online uh, through Facebook and YouTube and our website on your smartphones, your smart TVs, your laptops, your tablets, however and whatever means. We are glad that you are with us this morning. I, uh, If you're like me, your heart hurts that we are physically not able to be together this morning. Um, I hate it uh, as much as anybody. Um, we love the Easter celebration that we have on a normal Easter Sunday, but this is not a normal Easter Sunday. Uh, as you can see, I've got a cemetery behind me. We'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit. But we're glad to be with you this morning. Uh, I want to let you know that we have a new way for you to connect with us. On our website at metterumc.com, there's an online worship tab. And underneath that tab is a connection card. You can click on that and fill that form out and let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. If you're, uh, if you're uh, afraid that God go into that connection card right now, you're going to leave our video, then just wait till after the worship service and let us know that you are worshiping with us. Maybe you're watching us on your, on your TV and you got your smartphone. We'll just go to our website and fill that connection card out for us. That, ha that, that connection card has a place for you to um, put any prayer requests. We'd love to be praying for you however we can. Also, there's a place for you to let us know how you are worshiping with us this morning. Facebook, YouTube, and our website. That would help us in the future as we move into this online space. Uh, however you are with us and from wherever, we're glad you're with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every day that you give us, but especially this Easter day. This day where we celebrate that through the power of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit that is connecting us across screens from all over, is the same spirit and power that rose Christ from the dead. We are thankful that because Christ is alive, so are we. We have eternal life in Christ. Because Christ sacrificed on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sin, that our relationship with you is, has been restored. And so we give thanks and praise to you, our Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that you would, through your Spirit, be present with us this morning. Move in us and guide us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. The story crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studied about that good old way, and who shall wear? The story crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to play. As I went down in the river to play, studied about that good old way, and who shall wear the story crown, good Lord. Play. 
I want to let you know about a few things that are happening at the church this week. For our county, uh, it is spring break, and so we're going to be taking it a little easy. Uh, but we're going to still have Wednesday night online Bible study at 6.30. We are studying the book of Galatians, and so we invite you to join and be a part of that. We just started last week. We only did 10 verses. So join us this week as we look at Galatians 1.11 through 210. Uh, there is a PDF on our Facebook group page that has the study and five daily readings. They're very short, easy reads, and so uh, that gets you prepared for the study on Wednesday night. So join us Wednesday nights at 630. You should have received an email this week with a list of names of healthcare workers in our church or related to those in our church, uh, those who are on the front line with this crisis and this virus. And so we encourage you to add them to your daily prayer time. If we missed anyone, please let us know. You can email us at info at metterumc.com or call us at 912-685-2777. I want to let you know that next Sunday, April the 19th, I'm going to be hosting an online Sunday school class at 945 on Zoom. I've been talking about Zoom for the last few weeks, and so I encourage you to go ahead and download that app on your phone, your tablet, your, your, uh, your laptop, and uh, we'll gather together at 945 next Sunday. I'll send the link out during the week. And we'll gather together and I'll be able to break you off into your Sunday school classrooms. And so maybe you haven't seen your Sunday school classmate for the last few weeks. This is an opportunity for you to do that. So join us at 945 uh, on Zoom next Sunday uh, before worship. Lastly, I want to thank you for your generosity during this time. We know that for many of you, it is a difficult thing. And so we appreciate anything you're able to give to the to our church. Um, and uh, it's not really about donations or contributions, but it's about worship. Uh, when we are giving, we are worshiping God. And so uh, I am simply inviting you to, to worship Him through your, your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. If you wait till the end of the service, there'll be information for how you can give. Uh, you can give on our website online. Uh, you can give a one-time or a reoccurring donation, or you can mail in your, your, your gifts to the church office. Let's continue to worship God this morning. Hello, everyone. It's a beautiful Easter morning, and aren't we blessed? I want to tell you the story of Easter today based on Luke 22 through 24 and Mark 14 through 16. But I'm going to use the items in a bag. We know Miss Heather likes to use bags, so I thought of a bag. And I'm going to tell the story, and I'm going to find little things out of my bag that might help us understand the story a little bit better. Okay? So after dinner, um, dinner back then was fish. We got some goldfish. After dinner, Jesus goes to the garden to pray. He knows something is going to happen. Some men came to take Jesus away. Um, I have a little soldier man here. Um, they came to take Jesus away. They dressed Jesus in a purple robe and a crown made of thorns. And then Jesus carries what up the hill? He carries a cross up the hill. And what did they do to Jesus? They nailed Jesus to the cross. They nailed his hands right through the palms of his hands and his tops of his feet. When Jesus died on the cross, darkness covered the earth. Jesus' body was laid in a borrowed tomb. So back then they had to close the door by rolling a big stone is rolled against the door. So I got a rock. The next morning, Mary and some other women came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away. It was empty, empty, just like this egg. Now, I know this morning you've probably looked through your Easter eggs or you're planning on to this afternoon. I hope you don't find an empty one. But if you do, just remember that ju that just reminds us of Jesus's tomb was empty. And where was Jesus? An angel had appeared and told the women, he is not here. Or he has risen. He has risen like the golden sun we get to see almost every day. There are some clouds sometimes, but 
we look forward and are blessed to see this sun every day. Just like Jesus is the son of God, he is risen. Okay, so instead of uh, closing with a prayer today, I'm going to close with a scripture. Jesus said, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. That's John 12, 46. I hope you have a very blessed Easter. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 Amen.
and a good Easter morning to all. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want you to imagine that first Easter morning. The disciples were still grieving the loss of their rabbi, their, their, their teacher, their Jesus, the Messiah. How could this be? How could the Savior of the world be dead? How can a Savior save anyone when they're dead? The disciples were gathered together this Easter morning. John's Gospel tells us that they were locked away in a room for fear of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. The Jewish leaders had nailed Jesus to a cross. Who knows what they might do to the disciples next. But some strange and unbelievable news was swirling around that morning. The women among the disciples had gone to the tomb that morning after the Passover was finished to finish preparing Jesus' body for burial. They had gone to their equivalent of a cemetery where I'm standing right now. But when they arrived at the tomb, the stone to the entrance had been rolled away. And when they went inside, there was no body. Obviously, they were surprised and they were confused. But at that moment, two angels appeared to them and told them amazing news. Jesus was alive. He is risen. So the, so the women, they rush back to the eleven. Remember, Judas is no longer with the disciples. They run back to the, the disciples locked away in fear to tell them this news. And, and when they get there and the women are talking, the disciples can't understand anything they're saying. The women were probably talking so fast, so excited, so confused, they're talking over one another trying to tell the disciples what they had learned. And they aren't making any sense. You ever gotten so excited about telling someone something that you end up not making much sense? Our kids do this sometimes. They learn something, they find something out, they, they've done something, and, and a, one of us parents, we walk in the room and, and they all want to be the first one to tell us and they all end up talking over each other not making much sense. I think that's what happened with the women and the disciples that first Easter morning. So the disciples, they don't believe them, except for Peter. Or at least Peter wanted to see for himself. So he gets up, he rushes out of that locked room. He runs to the tomb. He looks inside and there he sees that Jesus' body is indeed gone. He's not quite sure what to make of it, but at least he's seen it for himself. In the meantime, two other disciples of Jesus, not members of the eleven, they are leaving the city of Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus. 
Perhaps they were in Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Maybe they were there for Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. We don't know. But they're, they're leaving Jerusalem on the way to Emmaus, and they're walking and they're talking about Jesus' death. And while they are talking, Jesus joins them on the road, the road to Emmaus. Jesus joins them, but they don't recognize Him. They walk and they talk, and Jesus begins to tell them about Himself using the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah. When they arrive in Emmaus, uh, the two disciples ask Jesus to eat with them, still not knowing that it was Jesus. As soon as Jesus breaks the bread, though, and He gives thanks, the eyes of the disciples are opened, and also Jesus disappears. Well, just like the women who saw the angels at the tomb, these two disciples, they rush back to the eleven disciples to tell them the news. The scripture tells us they rush and they tell the disciples, it is true, the Lord has risen. And the whole room begins to talk about this amazing, confusing, wonderful news. Could it be that Jesus is alive? And it's at this exact moment where our scripture begins. While they were talking about all of this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. I don't know about you, but I just got chills. The risen Jesus showed up behind locked doors to an isolated, scared group of followers of Jesus, a group of people who don't know what the future holds, and he says to them, Peace be with you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that must have been like for those disciples? Can you imagine that first Easter morning? Well, here's the thing. This Easter morning, April 12th, 2020, we don't have to use our imagination very much. For the first time in most of, if not all of our lives, we are spending this Easter morning in much the same way as those first 11 disciples. We are sheltering in place. We are holding up and hunkering down in our own homes, physically distant from one another, wondering what the future holds. Now, of course, we're not holed up in fear behind locked doors because someone's going to bang them down and drag us out. But perhaps we are fearful of an invisible virus that could cause harm to us or our family members, potentially grave harm to us. And now more than ever, we need Jesus to walk in our midst and speak these words to us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Can you imagine what those words must have been like, must have done for those first disciples? They were scared. They were confused. They didn't know what to believe. They had heard Jesus was alive, but they were, they weren't completely sure. I mean, except for Lazarus, how many dead men had they seen come back to life? Yet Jesus appears behind locked doors to those first disciples who were sheltering in place and speaks to them, peace be with you. This Easter morning, as you are sheltering in place, isolated from loved ones, those that you care about, perhaps you are scared, perhaps you are uncertain, perhaps you are uh, confused and disoriented, just like those first disciples. I want you to hear this morning fresh words from Jesus. Peace be with you. This morning, perhaps more so than any other Easter morning in our lifetime, we are put in the shoes of those first disciples. And we don't need to run away from that. We need to lean into it. And just like them, we get to experience the risen Jesus say to us, peace be with you. Maybe you need peace from this crisis, this moment, this this virus. And, you know, the the number of cases are increasing. The number of deaths are increasing. You need to hear a word of peace this morning. So peace be with you. Maybe you need peace this morning from your family, your loved ones that you are sheltering in place with right now. I'm, I'm sort of joking, but I'm not really. It's kind of difficult to be cooped up with one another for so long, and we have so many more days ahead of us. So peace be with you. Perhaps you need peace from an addiction, a destructive behavior that you cannot conquer on your own. 
And this time of isolation and sheltering in place has only made things worse. You need peace from it, and you need to know that there is hope. Well, Christ is risen, and there is hope. There is always hope in Jesus. So here now, peace be with you. Maybe you need peace when it comes to your job or your business. These are tough times. Everything has come to a halt. Business, your business has come to a halt. You are worried and you're scared, not necessarily for yourself, but for your loved ones, your family members. You want to make sure that they are taken care of. Well, I can't and I won't promise you anything. God is offering you peace this morning. Well, in fact, God's word does promise us that he will take care of us. God will always provide for what we need. We may make it by the skin of our teeth, but God will give us everything we need. So here now, peace be with you. Perhaps your whole life is in need of peace. You tried everything under the sun. You tried this religion and that religion. You've uh, even tried church, Christianity, but you really didn't give it much of a shot. You've read every self-help book there is. You name it, you tried it. But your life is still kind of a wreck right now. You've never really had peace. In fact, you hear that word and you're like, what is that? Well, the greatest peace that the risen Christ offers to each one of us is peace to our relationship with our Heavenly, pa- Heavenly Father. Peace to our relationship with God. Our relationship with God was broken because of our bent towards sin, disobedience. And there's no way to mend that relationship. Nothing worked except for a perfect sacrifice. And Jesus was that perfect sacrifice because he lived a, a blameless, sinless life before God. And so Jesus died the death that we were meant to die because death is the penalty for sin. And when Jesus rose from the dead on that first Easter morning, He not only paid our debt for our sin on the cross, when Jesus, the risen Jesus, broke the power of sin in our lives. Sin no longer has a hold on us. We can choose not to sin and we can choose to live into the freedom and the peace that Christ offers us us all. So maybe this morning your whole life, your your whole soul needs peace. Christ is offering you that this morning. You just have to accept it and to live into it. I hope if you haven't already that you will ask for that this morning. So here now, peace be with you. This Easter morning, Jesus is in our midst. Wherever you are, He is there. He is risen and He is offering us a word of peace to our human hearts. But God also understands that those words might not be enough. Those words of peace were not enough for those first 11 disciples that first Easter morning, even though they were looking at the risen Jesus in the flesh and they heard the words, peace be with you, they still had trouble believing. So here's what Jesus did. He showed them his hands and his feet. He showed them the nail marks and he invited the disciples to touch those marks. Can you imagine touching the holes in Jesus' hands and feet? This is what Jesus invited those first disciples to do so that they would believe. But even then, in all of their joy and excitement, they still were having trouble believing that this was real. So Jesus does one more act. He asked for something to eat. Now, I've never been dead for three days and come back to life, but I'd imagine if I did, I'd be hungry too. I get hungry at three hours after eating breakfast. I can't imagine after three days being dead. And we're not sure if Jesus had anything to eat while he was in prison and waiting trial. So we could be talking longer than three days. But Jesus is not eating because he's hungry. Jesus is eating to prove a point. He's proving the point that He is risen, that Christ is risen indeed. He's not a ghost, but He is Jesus in the flesh. He is alive. Jesus has showed the disciples His hands and feet, invited the disciples to touch them, and now He's eating food all to prove a point, all to help them believe. He does all these things so that they will not only hear the words, peace with you, but they would receive peace. 
I want to be careful here. The only uh, thing the Bible invites us to test God with is in our giving. So I'm not asking you to test God. But I am asking you this. What does God need to reveal to you, to show to you, to help you understand so that you will receive the peace that Christ offers to each one of us? Again, Jesus went the extra mile to help the 11 disciples receive peace. What do you need from God so that you can receive and claim the peace of Christ this day and each day moving forward? Ask God to open up your heart, to show to you, to reveal to you His peace so that you might live into that peace each and every day. Everyone, I love you. God loves you. And the risen Christ on this Easter morning, as we are sheltering in place, isolated from loved ones, uncertain about the future ahead, He is speaking these words to you. Peace be with you. Receive that peace in your life however you need it and allow God through Jesus to go to great lengths to show show you that peace. Peace be with you with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.